Okay, the last, um, <clears throat> the last four questions. So let's look at what's happening in 236. So 236 is telling us that um, you, we, make the, we have this product, product A, and it needs two components. So we make 10,000 units of A, but it needs two components of component X. So basically we need 20,000 units of X. So we're dealing with the 20,000 units of X. Just a little sort of story to start, the, but just kind of work out what they're looking for. And they're telling us that each component of X has variable cost of 6 and a divisible fixed cost of 25,000 a month. So that's 25,000 over the 20,000 gives us a pound 25. So an additional sort of variable cost of one pound 25 giving us seven pound 25. And currently supplier has offered to sell it for you to buy this externally at seven pound. And if you compare these two, that's 25p saving. So yes, go for it. So that's 25p across all the 20,000 components. So 25p times 20,000 takes you nicely into 5,000. So that's the answer B for that one. Let's look at this here. Um, <clears throat> what are we saying? So we're saying that um, that you currently sell this thing for ten pounds, and the variable cost is eight pounds fifty. So you're currently making a contribution of one pound fifty on each of them, um, and that's on the one thousand screws. You're currently making one thousand five hundred. So this is currently contributing to your um, non-divisible fixed costs but, but in the process of doing this you have some if you like specific fixed costs to in this area of 2000 that you're dealing with that is specific to your division and so the question is that well the other fixed cost of a thousand would be there anyway with or without you because they're not specifically to you they're not going anywhere as in the other thousand, it says with this fixed cost of three thousand, the other thousand probably has just been given to you. It's maybe allocated or apportioned, if you like, to you, but it's not specific. It's going to be there. Someone's just going to have to take it on. So it'll go somewhere else. So if you were to stop trading, yes, you would lose out on the one thousand five, but you would have saved on this fixed cost. You wouldn't have to deal with this fixed cost. So overall, there is a saving of five hundred as a result of this of this activity. You lose out the one thousand five hundred, but but at the same time, um, you wouldn't have to deal with this fixed cost anymore. So the answer there is 1,500. Question 238 is uh, it's a remnant from one of the earlier sort of questions we did on joint costs, joint products. So currently it says that you've the split off point, you can sell this product at the split off point, you've made it. And you can sell it now for nine. And it's asking you, okay, if you do some more work on it, some further processing, it's going to cost you five. So technically, its value would be 14. And it's saying you can now sell it for 14. So really, there is, you know, really there's nothing. There's no difference between you doing it here and here. Ultimately, there is just, what's the net effect of further processing? Well, there's no gain or loss or anything. It's, it's nothing, really. You might as well just sell it here sell it for nine it doesn't mean anything because if you could sell it for 15 okay yes that made sense or 16 but you're selling it for 14 which is literally the same as the extra value you're putting into it no additional value so the answer is c if you like the answer is asking what's the net effect of processing um the product there's no net effect technically this was 15 if this was 15 at least you would say the value was six and the cost was five so the net effect would be one positive one so the answer is c there and the final question here, um, again, it's just looking at what's happening. It tells us here that we're currently making a loss of four. Okay, let's analyze it a little. So we currently sell these things for 45. Okay. And it says that currently uh, variable costs, let's look at those, um, direct labor, 25, direct material, 15. And we have this divisible cost to us of 4,000. We spread that 4,000 over the 1,000 units, <coughs> which is what we're doing. Um, we will have 4, and we will have a total cost of 44. So that's the total variable cost, and that's what we're selling. So we actually have a positive contribution of a pound 
you see the sinks currently making a contribution of a pound in every unit. That's true. Um, so the current profit earned by the sinks is 4,000. Well, no, that's not true. It's In terms of profit, we're making a loss anyway. But even if you would look at this contribution, you would say that was 1 times 1,000, which is 1,000. So it's not even 4,000. So that's not true. We do not ignore the, the visible fixed costs. They are variable. They're varying as we're going along. So that's not correct. The job costing method is charging. Yes, that's correct. Um, because that's where we're going, which is why we're making a loss of four. So somehow they've allocated um, an additional cost, if you like, of five here, which is why we then fall into this loss of four pound, so to speak. So imagine we're making one, you now allocate five. So of course we're making a loss of four. So this is correct in terms of just, it's what mathematically correct. So the answer here um, is C. Awesome. So those are all the questions now answered.